In today's episode of Focus, I'm going to take you through one of my favorite transition drills called Spartan Drill. I got the drill from Michigan State coach Tom Izzo. It's a drill they like to use, so that's why I call it the Spartan Drill. It's a progressive transition drill that starts two verse one, and it works its way all the way up to five verses five. You're going to love it. And it's a really, really simple drill, and you can keep points for all kinds of different things on offense and defense, but really, really simple. We're going to start with X1 at the free throw line, and they're going to take a free throw. Now, you could have B1 and B2 here. You could have B2 start off to the side, and when B1 gets it, have them zip up the court and have X1 try to chase them. Depends on what you're trying to accomplish and what you want it to look like. I'm going to put our b2 player underneath either one of them gets the rebound the other one's going to take off so x1 takes the free throw they make it they get a point they miss it they don't get a point and let's just say that ball bounces to b1 b2 is going to zip up the court ideally run in the lane a little bit a little bit wider but they know they have a chance here to just sprint out and beat x1 up the floor on the miss x1 is going to try to sprint back and beat them to the spot and b1 is going to look to attack I tell my X1 player to get their head, the back of their head, to the front of the rim. And what I mean by that is they want to protect the paint at all costs. So X1 is going to sprint for us, and they're going to get into the paint. B1 and B2 are going to attack. And what I like to tell that X1 player to do is really to stunt at them, force them to make a decision at the last minute, so typically in a game, our other players can come back and they can help out and make a play on the basketball. The longer they hold the ball, the more chance we have for help. We know it's a two versus one in this drill. So this player is going to really try to force them into a tough decision. And the closer they get, whatever that pass is, whether they score or miss, X1 is going to get the basketball. They obviously could pull up for a three-pointer as well if they chose to do so in transition, depending on your principles. Really, really simple now. Once X1 secures that rebound, we're going to get X3 and X4 on the court. Now, X1 could get the rebound, push, and hit them. X1 could hit our X4, free throw line extended for an outlet. One dribble, and they could zip it up to X3. But we're looking to attack and score as quick as possible. You could put time constraints and only give them 10 seconds to score or 5 seconds to score. Whatever you want to do with your team, there's a number of different things that you can do. So we would have our X4. We would have our X3 player here. We would have our X1 up here. And then our... B1 and B2 if they were able to get back. And now it becomes one, two, three versus our two defenders. When our defenders get the rebound, X4, X3, X4, and X1 are going to work back on defense. B4 and B3 are going to come in on offense. It could be an outlet pass, however it works out. And now it becomes four on three. We have our B1, B2, B3, and our B4 player all out there trying to score against our three defenders in the paint. Let's say X4 gets the rebound. They can outlet to X2. X1's running the floor. X3's running the floor. X5's running the floor. And now it becomes five verse four. So we'll have our X1, X2, X3, X4, and X5 out there. And then your B1, B2, B3, and B4. And however you like them to set up defensively, but it becomes a five on four. Again, trying to score quickly. We get the rebound and that last player comes onto the floor and now it becomes five versus five. We like to put about 10 minutes on the clock and have three teams that are rotating through here. We've also done it with five minutes with two teams 
or you could do a seven minute stint, depending on how much time you want to spend on this in transition. 10 minutes was the absolute max, and we would typically have that third team rotate in. So we go up and back, takes about two minutes. Then you get the winner stays, the next team comes on, they play, one of those teams is off the court, and then it's about another two minutes. So you're going pretty consistently um, up and back. And again, that two minute time frame depends on how quickly you want them to score. If you want them to score in five seconds, a drill is going to go a lot quicker. You might want to make it a five minute or a seven minute drill. Constraints, you could have all kinds of different things you do in terms of constraints. You could have uh, from, from a time perspective, like I said, they have to score in uh, five seconds, not 0.5. They have to score in 10 seconds. You could have constraints like that on there. You could give points out, um, points for deflections, points for uncontested, for an uncontested layup. You could give points out, you know, double points if you want to emphasize points in the paint or three pointers. So there's a like any small sided game or game situation, you can award the points that you want. So different restraints, different things you can put into the drill that you want them to do. You could also put in different actions that you want to see as a secondary. So you might want to see a double drag ball screen for secondary so you tell them when we get to five on five we go down and back and i want to see double drag executed or when we get to four players out there we want to see a double drag ball screen so different things that you could try to execute in these situations and that's just one example spartan drill one of my favorite drills that you can do with your team